Hello, potato, and welcome to Weekend Magic for September the 16th, 2023. So there was no big releases of, like, anything in the last week. There were there were those Bounty Hunter pins. Take it back. There was one release. There was the Bounty Hunter pins on Chop Disney. But I have not ordered any of those. The, the, the one I would want the most would be there was, like, a, a group shot of all of them. But it's another one of those mini jumbo pins, like that Haunted Mansion one I got. And uh, I was disappointed in that pin, not because it didn't look nice. It was a nice looking pin, but because it was much more mini than jumbo. And uh, $35, I guess mini is the size of the pin. And jumbo was the price because it was $35. And so was this Bounty Hunter one. So that's one I'm... Um, if it stays in there long enough to get marked down or go on sale... Maybe I'll pick it up then, but I'm not paying 35 bucks for it. Nope. The Cad Bane and Fennec Shand pins were nice, too. But otherwise, I, I, nothing I found particularly interesting this week. I know there was some, like, homeware stuff, like cups and pitchers and table runners and stuff like that. But that's not anything that I'm particularly into, which doesn't mean we won't be getting any of it. But it's nothing that I'm particularly into. Of course, next week we do have the release of the 90s portion of Disney 100 Decades, which they have revealed so far the uh, backpack, which I think was Goof Troop, or I guess probably Goofy Movie, not Goof Troop. I mean, same characters, but more or less different, different timelines, though. And then they released the uh, picture of the Darkwing Duck plush, which normally I, I, you know, I'd be like all in there for Darkwing Duck, but uh, that plush doesn't look great. And also, we're not doing the plush this year, so... I will have to take a pass on Darkwing. I'm guessing it's going to be another pin-only month. I don't think we've seen pictures of the ears yet. We're not doing the Magic Band. I'm, well, I'm not doing the Magic Band. There's nothing to say that we aren't doing the Magic Band really at this point, but I'm not. So I'm thinking it's going to be another pin-only month. So today, today's video, we are not doing another Happy Haunt Hunt video. We, we've got the main thing there. So. That can kind of take a little bit of a back seat. There's still going to be more, don't, don't you worry. But that can take kind of a back seat to what we are looking at today. September 1st saw the release of a new, basically, series of stuff from Disney. And it's kind of, it's indicative of, of, a, of a weird place that Disney's been going the last few years. Disney's been kind of getting gradually darker and I would say more violent. And I don't mean like Star Wars and Marvel, those things have always been what they basically continue to be. I mean stuff featuring your kind of mainstream Disney characters, your Mickeys and your your Aladdins and stuff like that. And I suppose we can kind of trace it back to the popularity of Kingdom Hearts, maybe. Because that is like the first time I can think of where we've seen, you know, Mickey Mouse wielding a sword in a non-comical environment. Obviously, like, like the brave little tailor and stuff, Mickey has a sword. But, I mean, where he's actually, like emoting and and fighting evil like he really means it but then we had that app uh, was it mirrorverse which i really do like the character designs I only, i've only bought one figure from it and that was uh, anger because you don't see a lot of anger toys uh, but i don't play that game i play enough of these freemium games i don't need that and then there's like, i think it's a board game called disney battle arena which is kind of in that same vein of your kind of mainstream disney characters but being violent and of course you have the the villainous game series and now have Marvel and Star Wars ones too. They're just uh just jamming those down our throats with more more villains. And it's kind of funny that, you know, they are doing these villainous games when I don't think we've had an actual proper Disney villain in like six animated movies now. I mean uh Turning Red, it was it's, it's like all trauma now. It's all trauma, usually like familial trauma, because like Turning Red was familial trauma, and Kanto was familial trauma, Coco was familial trauma, Soul was not familial, but certainly was just like internal trauma. We haven't had like a new Disney villain in like years. Onward didn't really have a proper villain. So I mean it, it feels weird that Disney's focusing a lot on like, making things darker, focusing on villains when we aren't getting any new villains. And I feel like Lorcana is a continuation of that, because it looks like... I mean, it's a trading card game, but it, it, the art style looks like we're kind of badassing up characters who maybe aren't traditionally kind of badass. 
And so the official release of Lorcana was actually on midnight of the first day of SAC anime. And I did get up at midnight to order stuff because I was going to skip it. I was planning on taking a pass in Lorcana. I hadn't been looking forward to it. I mean, it looked neat, but just like Mirrorverse and Battle Arena, it's just not a thing I was planning to get into. My wife had other ideas. So if you watched last week's SAC anime video all the way into the haul portion of the video, and you would be one of the few people that did if you did, you'll remember that I did mention having ordered a bunch of Lorcana stuff and having picked up this at SAC anime. We didn't pick up any cards at SAC anime because there weren't that many of them, and what was there was monstrously expensive, like $20 for a booster, $40 for a starter deck expensive. And I had already ordered the stuff off of Shop Disney, and the only thing I really regret is I'm not ordering more of one particular item, which we'll look at today, because it has booster packs in it. And uh, yeah, I mean, at 20 bucks a pop, this thing was, was would have been a better deal. When I tried to order more, even though Shop Disney showed they were in stock, they weren't really in stock. But I will say, you know, as much as I want to complain about them showing Lorcana stuff being in stock when it wasn't, and of course, since then, they have like just completely removed it all from the website. If you bookmarked anything, those bookmarks just lead to error pages now. They, they say they may or may not get more in. At least uh, we know they'll be getting more in in December because even though the series has been out for officially, what, two weeks as of this recording, they've already announced a second collection coming out in the beginning of December with two more starter decks and I believe a new gift set. And I'm guessing that has new boosters in it too. And I'm not sure, is that is that just like greed? Because I feel like, you know, when you couldn't even supply the first series sufficiently, it feels weird to like three months later rush out a second series? Or is it just like they're hoping to sell as much as they can before the game doesn't succeed? Let's face it, we've had a lot of trading card games in the last few decades. And I, I've bought a few of them. Uh, Yu Hakusho was actually the last one I was into. But before that, uh, I of course did put Pokemon back, like original Pokemon, I'm sure all of my cards. Some of them may be worth money, but none of them worth anything in combat. And I did the X-Files trading card game, which I never actually played. I just kind of collected those. But I mean, everything's had like a trading card game since then. And with the exception of like Magic, Pokemon, and Yu-Gi-Oh, they've all kind of died sad, poor deaths. But I feel like we're seeing a resurgence now. Uh, not only do we have Disney Lorcana, we have all these like weird crossovers from Magic the Gathering, like the Lord of the Rings one. I think it's like a Fallout one coming out. There's a Doctor Who one coming out. And I'm not going to buy those as much as I like both of those series. And I feel this is just maybe Disney jumping onto that in the same way like Disney Infinity jumped onto the Toys to Life craze. And probably, honestly, between them and Lego Dimensions, which I, I really loved. Uh, probably well, also in the fact there were like five bazillion Skylanders figures by the end there kind of helped kill Toys to Life uh, as a game, which uh, I'm, I'm disappointed. I really wished uh, Dimensions had continued on, but oh well. So I'm not sure really if, if Disney's just trying to sell as much of this Lorcana stuff before it tanks, before the card game thing crashes again, or if they like just are legitimately trying to strike while the iron's hot and want to rush us to, to market in time for Christmas. But anyways, we're not going to have answers to that today. What we are going to have today is a look-see at some Lorcana stuff, the stuff I ordered for my wife. And uh, I'm going to open it all first and take a look at it before she gets to. So first, they released two or three playmats. Uh, there was the Maleficent one. There was a Steamboat Willy one, which honestly I found kind of disappointing. Uh, they should have done Sorcerer's Apprentice. I probably I would have ordered that. If there had been Sorcerer's Apprentice, I'd have ordered the Sorcerer's Apprentice one for myself. And I think uh, Maui was the third one that was available. They released a couple lore books, which are basically just collector's binders. Uh, the Evil Queen and Stitch. They released three starter decks. A thing called the Gift Set. And then there was something that's called like the Illumineers box or something like that. And that was not Shop Disney. I've only seen that on sale, like from resellers on Amazon for like $250. So guess what I'm not buying. And then for the December release, they announced, I think, two more decks, two more playmats. I think it was Beast, which my wife had sent me a picture of that. Uh, and at first I thought from the coloring and everything that it was Chernabog, but no, it's just Beast in, in mood lighting. And then like Winnie the Pooh is a honey wizard, which I may get that one for myself. That one uh, is the most interesting one I've seen so far. But look at the stuff we have today. So first, we did order 
a play mat for my wife. I have never, in all the years I've played card games, going back to... I dabbled a little bit in Magic back in the 90s, but Pokemon was the only one I ever really played particularly seriously. And I've never, ever had a play mat for any of the games that I've played. But now we do. So let's uh, take a look here at... Well, I've picked out the Maleficent one. If we can get it open without destroying the box, that would be wonderful. Because I haven't opened and looked at any of this yet. But here is our playmat, I guess, to protect the cards. I'm not... I don't totally get the playmat thing. I know, with, like, some... I think I've seen, like, Magic ones and you... And, uh, say, Yu Yu show Yu-Gi-Oh! ones that, like, have laid out on them where the cards go when you're playing. And that seems useful. This... It looks neat, but I, I'm honestly... I don't totally get what damage the cards are going to face on my table. I guess unless my table looks dirty, but I feel like this could get dirty too, especially if you're eating snacks while playing, which you probably shouldn't do, because then you'll get like Cheeto dust on your cards. But yeah, here is Maleficent. She's been kind of, kind of, getting badassed up a little bit more than we, I mean, I, I always feel she's pretty, you know, pretty formidable looking normally, but uh, they've gone ahead and kind of given her that, that Mirrorverse treatment to make her look just a little bit tougher. But yeah, that's uh, the playmat. Not bad. Um, need to like flatten it out a bit because it, it has been rolled up in the box. But it seems nice if I assume this is as much space as you would need to lay out the cards for playing. I haven't looked up how to play this yet. That's not what this video is. We're not going to be going into how to play Lorcana because I, I don't know yet. I haven't read the instructions. We're just looking at the stuff. And the next stuff is uh, my wife wanted one of the lore books. So we've got the Evil Queen lore book. Now this says it holds, where to go? 64 standard cards and eight oversized cards. So I know that the gift set comes with two oversized cards. I think the Illumineer set may have come with some oversized cards as well. And I believe the gift set they've renounced for the second series is going to have more oversized cards as well. So I guess that's how you're going to fill this up. But I guess you would just put like your, maybe you're the ones you want to trade in here or your really valuable ones. I guess there's our, our oversized pockets. I mean, I would assume you're not going to put your actual deck in here. Your deck is going to go in here. They also had sleeves at SAC Anime, but all they had was Captain Hook. And uh, that was the other deck box they had as well, by the way, is a Captain Hook. And yeah, we just, uh, she wasn't, wasn't looking for Captain Hook and neither was I. So we didn't get any of those. And then we got all three of the starter decks. We have Aurora and Simba, Cruella de Vil and Aladdin, and Moana and Mickey. And if I was going to pick one, I would probably go with this one for myself. And these are, of course, as with your, your standard trading card game, your Pokemon and your magic. These are perfectly playable out of the box as is. But of course, uh, if you're going to somebody who's like built up their own personal deck, you will probably get trounced. But each one contains two foils, presumably of our main characters there, Cruella de Vil and Aladdin. Like Warrior Wizard Mickey, not Sorcerer's Apprentice Mickey, which is interesting. And then Moana, which I, I kind of, I do like. I kind of like the art style they've done with Moana. They've, uh, I think made the face a little bit more expressive than her 3D version is. And then we have Aurora and Simba. And I guess they have types, because they say on the box here, we've got Sapphire and Steel, which wasn't that like a, a British serial, like science fiction thing from the 70s that had like, I think it had Joanna Lumley in it. I think it was called Sapphire and Still. I could be wrong, it could be something else. But I'm pretty sure it was Sapphire and Still, something like a few episodes of it. And uh, honestly, it wasn't awful. But then we have, over here we have Emerald and Ruby, not to be confused with Pokemon, and Amber and Amethyst. And these of course are put out by Ravensburger, or Ravensburger, I've heard it pronounced Ravensburger, which doesn't make any sense to me, but whatever. So let's, uh, they do tell you on the side of the box what all is in here, but still, let's, uh, let's open up and take a look, shall we? How do we open these? I mean, I'm guessing you can't open them without damaging the box a little, because then people would do that in the store, steal out the foil cards, 
and put them back on the shelf. And let's see, we go. And inside, so we have, looks like we have, uh, oh, they come with a booster pack each. That's not, I didn't realize that. So we have more boosters. That's cool. So we have in the box, so we have like, like, like damage counters. I remember when Pokemon started, it came with little glass damage counters. They were actually pretty cool. Uh, we have little cardboard ones here though. With some damage counters. We have, yeah, they were, so that's why I had wondered at SAC Anime why there were booths selling the, the starter decks out of the box. And it's because they come with a booster pack. That's why they were doing that. Now that makes sense because there was, there was a booth that was selling individual cards, like for as much as $80 per card. And they had these little foil, these little like, uh, like wax paper wrapped ones sitting there for sale. And I didn't, I didn't understand why they had bothered taking them out of the box. Now I understand why. It's, so that's actually not a bad deal. I think these were, I think 17 each. And so, I mean, even though each deck is going to be the same, that they come with a booster pack is actually pretty cool. Let's take a look here. I'm not going to look at necessarily all, well, let's take them all out. Because I do, because I'm going to open the boosters. We've got to see what the boosters are. Yes, that's what this is now. Vorted Intelligence is now a channel where we open booster packs. I mean, heck, it works for all those Yu-Gi-Oh! channels and Pokemon channels. Why not for me? All right. So there is our Aladdin deck. Let's just stick these back in here. So yeah, I need to learn how to how to play. So it looks like there are some instructions here. Quick start rules. Where'd they go? And looks like we have like a little bit of a a paper play mat to start us out. Is that okay? That's as folded out as it gets. Guess maybe it's whether you're right-handed or left-handed. And then we have our instructions here. We have quick start rules. What will cards do? That's yeah, interesting. So we'll have to actually play it a bit and see what we think. This one I'm actually going to open up. I'm going to actually open up and look at the Mickey and Moana one to give us an idea of what this really looks like. So I guess that makes it worth it to... So that means that booth at SAC Anime was selling individual boosters for more than I paid for decks with boosters. That's, uh, I don't know, kind of shady. It's, I know it's capitalism. It's where we're at, but I, uh, I don't personally approve. So probably what are you getting those? You get 12 additional cards in each booster pack. So that's cool. All right. So which one I said, we'll look at, I said Moana and so is this our Moana deck then? Yeah. Ariel. Okay. Moana comes with Ariel. So let's, let's take a look at these. Actually, I guess let's, uh, let's go down there so we can take a better look at them. Okay, so yeah, let's check out our Moana and Mickey deck. This is the Amber and Amethyst deck. Not that that means anything to me yet. Like I said, I'm, I'm, I'll read the instructions later. Right now we're just looking at the pretty, pretty cards. So the back of the cards have our, I guess that is our Lorcana symbol. I'm assuming the name Lorcana is like a combination of like lore and arcana. I don't know. Makes sense to me. So each deck's supposed to have two foils in it. So we have a couple. So yeah, there's our foil Moana and our foil Mickey. And then we have Ariel, we have Cinderella, Hades, Hey Hey, only one Hey Hey though, Maximus, True Friend Mickey, we get three of those, three minis, Three Stitch, uh, New Dog Stitch. We have Be Our Guest, Control Your Temper, oh, get what, the glare on it. Control Your Temper, Hakuna Matata, Part of Your World, Dinglehopper, Dr. Facilier, 
David Dr. Sully, Dr. Sully, Agent Provocateur, and Dr. Facilier Charlatan. Flotsam, Jafar, Jetsam, The Magic Broom. All right, we have uh, some Sorcerer's Apprentice stuff here. That's always going to please me. Sorceress Maleficent, Olaf, Pascal, Rafiki. The artwork on these is pretty nice. Sven, Wardrobe, Yzma, Friends on the Other Side. So that's what you need to start playing. So yeah, we have our, our foil characters. They seem to be most powerful. We have a four and a five on them. Everybody else seems to be... Well, Ariel's a four. But we have a lot of ones and threes here. Uh, it's like Jetsam is a four. Jafar is a four. Yeah, I don't know. I'm assuming that's something to do with, like, their power. And I probably should have set the... Let me clean this up, and then we'll continue. Okay, so I've adjusted the lighting a little bit, too, to try to cut down on the glare on the cards. So as you'd expect on uh, your, your typical trading card game, we have some artwork. We have, I'm assuming, the power rating. We have, I'm guessing, attack and defense scores. I'll have to look and see what those mean. Okay, so that is Mickey's strength. He has three strength and four willpower. So it's not how much take how much damage it takes to banish. So basically it is defense. It's like their hit points. We have lore value. So this is how much ink it costs to play. So you say you use ink instead of like say energies or whatever. Although I didn't know it was like wasn't any ink cards, like you know, Pokemon or Magic. You have land cards, you have energy cards, nothing like that here. So then you see how, how, the, uh, how the whole ink thing ultimately works. But you have some, some nice art. The foil's kind of understated, to be honest, compared to like... I remember Pokemon cards being quite, quite shiny. This one's a little more subtle. But you have... Uh, so Mickey's powers are Animate Broom, Pay One Ink Less to Play Broom Characters, which we know we have... The magic broom there. And then Ceaseless Worker. Whenever one of your broom characters is banished to a challenge, you may return that card to your hand. And of course, we have a little quote at the bottom. He always goes for the clean sweep. So if you're going to tie the brooms, then why didn't they make him Sorcerer's Apprentice Mickey? That's such an iconic character, and they didn't do it. Moana of Motunui is Storyborn, Hero, and Princess. He's Dreamborn and a Sorcerer. Because again, some sort of classification thing. And Moana's power is we can fix it. Whenever this character quests, you may ready your other princess characters. They can't quest for the rest of this turn. So I mean, we did have um, what, Ariel in here. We had, I think, Cinderella, right? Sven, Yzma. Yeah, we had Ariel, we had Cinderella. Minnie is classed as a princess. So I mean, it's Princess Minnie. So yes, you know, they're, they're made to work off of the strengths of what comes in that deck. But again, it's a trading card game. You can mix and match the rest for the best. But yeah, they look nice. Cards feel pretty good. Not too thin and flimsy. Pretty slick as uh, they slide all over the place. Let's put you over there. And then before we open these, let's open the last thing we have here. Yes, yeah, so we got an idea here at least of what what we're looking at on these. But I think ultimately, I mean, if you're probably still watching this, if you haven't, like, just gotten tired of my nonsense and wandered away, you want to see what's in the booster packs. But before we open the booster packs, we need to open the other big thing we got, the gift set. And this comes with four booster packs, two oversized foil cards, uh, two normal-sized foil cards, playable ones, and looks like some special, like, damage counters and stuff compared to the kind of... Uh, uh, I don't know, plainer ones that come in the starter decks. Looks like we have like some like personalized. What if we have like a be medicine other than just cardboard? All right, so yeah, just gonna kind of rip it open. Unfortunately, uh, ideally not knocking over the camera in the process. And yeah, they've not made these easy to open again because I'm sure you don't want people ripping into them into the stores. Yeah, I wish I wish I had thought to order 
more of these. I mean, I could have ordered one more. You limit was two. I wish I'd ordered one more of these when I ordered this one. But it was midnight, and I wasn't really thinking. I, like, literally got up close to right before midnight so I could do this. And was, I mean, still, uh, it was a much better experience than I had had with LEGO a few hours earlier. Because uh, their website for their release on the 1st was very much Shop Disney circa 2019, 2020, uh, which is say it was a mess. But that's for a future video. All right, so we've got our, so no, they're not, they're not nicer per se. They're still cardboard, but they are actually like Mulan and Hades themed instead of just being kind of uh, generic ones. Right, we have our booster packs. So it's more of the damage counters. It's not, I kind of thought these would be like plastic or something. They wouldn't just be the same cardboard ones that you already get in here. I mean, middle, they go up to minus five and we have minus one and minus three here. So that does give you, I guess, uh, gives you some more damage. I'm assuming these are damage counters. Gives you more of these to work with. And that's ultimately important otherwise you end up doing what we did, used to end up doing with pokemon which is like using pennies or getting that glass vase filler stuff and using those as damage counters just getting red and blue ones of those so here are our foil cards from this box we have hades king of olympus and Mulan, Imperial Soldier, and five and eight. Yeah, he's a, he takes a lot of ink to, to bring up, but he's got um, a willpower of seven. So that's, that's the biggest we've seen so far, certainly. And yeah, a little code down here. I'm guessing maybe there'll be like, probably be an online version of this later and you can put that code in to add it to your virtual deck or something. I think Magic and Pokemon have both done it. Actually, yeah, the Pokemon trading card game for Game Boy, I think, had the ability to do that, where you could, like, put a code in from your cards and it would add them to the game. And then we have the oversized versions of the same cards, which is uh, what we have those slots in the lore book for. And there go the damage counters. So Hades, so despite the boxes of some of these, uh, the, the gift box and the lore book box both suffered a little damage in shipping, the contents are fine. And I got a little, a little creasing at the bottom there. But yeah, just uh, basically just giant versions of the cards, also foil, so that's nice. Are they? No, they're the same. So I feel like you couldn't use these. Uh, first of all, why would you, you have normal size playable versions? Uh, but second, I think people would know what card it's going to be before you played it. All right, so that leaves us, though, booster packs. So that means we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven boosters to open. I thought we'd only have four, but we have seven. We have, uh, what, we have, uh, Elsa, Maleficent, Brave Little Taylor Mickey, another Elsa, another Maleficent, another Mickey, and another Elsa. Not Elsa, that's Maleficent. So let's uh, let's open these up and see what we got. I want to see if I got that uh, that eighty dollar card. It's like jeweled something or other that they were selling for eighty bucks at Sack Anime. Maybe we'll get one of those. I remember when I first when I first started playing Pokemon, like like one of the first boosters I got had a Charizard in it. I didn't even, I didn't realize for ages how how uh, important the Charizard was because I had one like straight off and I used it. I used it all the way through my playing. He's still in my deck box somewhere. I'm not sure where the deck is, but it's there somewhere. All right, so who do we get in our first booster pack? We got Megara, Flounder, Sergeant Tibbs. Oh, what is Tibbs from? Oh, is he the Rescuers? I don't remember what he's from. He's not from Oliver and Friends, is he? Got another Dinglehopper. We had one of those in the deck. We have another Isma. Simba the Future King. Dragonfire. Another Sven. Mother. I mean, I, 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 part of me wants to complain about getting stuff that came in the starter decks, but not everybody's going to buy every starter deck. 
Mother Knows Best, Steal from the Rich, Ursula Power Hungry, Prince Ali, Aladdin, I'm guessing that is... Yeah, that's the same, same card. It's our foil. That's the same foil that comes in the starter deck. So maybe that's not so great. And then we do have a companion. Oh, there's a companion app. And okay, I saw these at SAC Anime as well. Uh, if you like get all of them, they form a little mini poster. We'll put you up there in case we get the rest of that mini poster. So, so our, our first foil card is a duplicate of one that came in the starter deck, but I mean, I don't know the rules yet. Maybe you can have two of the same. I mean, you obviously can have two of the same character because we have like three of some of them in the starter deck there. So I don't know if you, if, uh, if these big powerful ones, you can have two or three, if you even want to. I so they don't know how the ink thing works yet. That might be an issue to have two powerful characters in there. All right, next let's open our second one. And I'm sure, you know, I'm sure all these numbers and stuff on here probably mean things. There's probably going to be some way to tell which cards, like, what kind of cards you're going to get by looking at those, but I'm not, like, interested in that part of it. I'm not looking, like, to sell these or anything, so I don't... I'm not too concerned about the value uh, as much as I am just my wife being satisfied with them. All right, for our next pack, we have... Uh, we'll do it this way. So we have a... Uh, oh, we have a different, different part of the poster you over there we'll do them like this we'll look at the backs we'll flip them over no we shouldn't do that because the foil cards at the back isn't it all right we have tinkerbell magic golden flower goofy daredevil another hey hey as a boat snack freeze that would be good for elsa aladdin cornered swordsman bell inventive engineer Going a little steampunk with Bell, I see. That's kind of stuff that makes me think of that Mirrorverse stuff more. Maximus Mer Rel Relentless Pursuer. We had one of those in the starter deck. Starkey Hook's Henchman. Stitch Abomination, which I think is different than the stitch that was in there. That was like a dog stitch. Ooh, Tekka, that's a cool looking one. Look at that one. It's not a foil or anything, but I think that was called the Burning One. Storyborn, Villain, and Deity. Willpower of six. This character can't quest and must challenge each turn if able. She burns for that which was stolen from her. I like that one. That's kind of surprised that's not a foil. It looks really nice. But our foil here is a whole new world action song. Character with a cost five or more can whatever that symbol means to sing the song for free. Each player discards their hand and draws seven cards. Shining, Shimmering, Splendid. Okay. I like the Taka card. That one I think's... It's not the foil, but I think I, I think I like that one best out of that pack. Alright, that finishes our Elsa packs. Let's do... Let's do Maleficent next. And take a look at those. Alright. We have another... Nope, same piece. All right, we have Scar, Fiery Usurper, Timon, Grub Rustler, Dr. Facility of Charlatan, we had that in the starter, Megara pulling the strings thing was also in the starter, Detective Mickey, again, I like the art style on there, kind of kind of got a steampunk thing, definitely got a steampunk thing going on, look, it's got like Inspector Gadget hat there. Get a clue, when you play this character, you may put the top card of your deck in your inkwell, face down, and exerted. Wherever the seaweed had come from, Mickey was sure of one thing. Something fishy was going on. Tinkerbell Tiny Tactician? Look at his little battle tink. That's cute. LeFou Bumbler? Frying Pan? It's an item. Shield of Virtue? Also an item. A non-foil version of Mickey Mouse Wayward Sorcerer? Interesting. Tinkerbell Giant Fairy. And our foil is Dr. Facilier Agent Provocateur. So we have a foil. So I guess uh, not every card is. So are the. So we have a non foil Mickey and we have a foil Facilier. Now are they any different? So I guess maybe you just would want to put your foil ones into your book 
and use the non-foil, because, uh, here we go. Yeah, stat-wise, they appear to be the same. They do the same thing. So I guess your foils, your foils you're going to want to keep safe and sound in your lore book, which you can't see because the camera is not pointed at it. And, uh, yeah, all right. I get it. I'm, I think I'm getting more of it now because, yeah, if I had like a non-foil Charizard, I would have used it instead of the foil one. I probably should maybe would have used both. But, I mean, why, why risk damaging your valuable shiny foil card if you have a non, well, less valuable, non-shiny version of the same card? Right, pack number four. This is kind of a, a long weekend magic, isn't it? But I feel like if you're the kind of person that likes people watching, watching people open packs, then hey, this is probably the most interesting one I've ever done. All right, so we have part three of the Brave Little Taylor poster. So I'm wondering then if the next one is going to have a different little poster in it. And we have Merlin's self-appointed mentor. That's a pretty cool looking one. Wouldn't mind a foil of that. Minnie Mouse, always classy. Sebastian, court composer. Jetsam, Genie, the ever impressive, Cerberus, that's a pretty cool looking one too, Three Headed Dog, Ariel on Human Legs, Kronk, Right Hand Man, Captain, the Colonel's Lieutenant, that's another one from uh, Tangled, right? Lantern, that's definitely from Tangled. Do It Again, and we have a, uh, oh, what is her name? We have a, like, she's like the only one of the Mas Midnight Masquerade dolls we bought a few years ago. Mm, my wife would know her name. My wife will know her name when she looks at it. And then we have... F Phil. I don't know how to pronounce his name properly. Uh, Kingdom Hearts, he's always just called Phil. I'm going to call him Phil. I don't think I don't know that I've ever actually watched Hercules. Uh, I did play the Hercules portions of Kingdom Hearts, though. Trainer of Heroes. And he is our foil for pack number five. So that's half our packs done with. We've almost got the full little mini poster. I didn't see how much they were selling that for. I'm sure well more than any reasonable person should spend for it, though. But I mean, that's, that's what you expect from a convention, right? We got, nope, another, another there. And then we have, all right, so for pack five, we have Vicious Betrayal, Donald Duck strutting his stuff. We have, that's new one for us. He's got a sword. It's an action card. Pumbaa, the friendly warthog. Jafar, wicked sorcerer. Another Cerberus. Fan, the flames. Anna, heir to Arendelle. Ooh, Mad Hatter. Look at the artwork on that one. I love me some Mad Hatter. Tea Party. Whenever this card, was char whenever this character is challenged, you may draw a card. Mad Hatter, would you like a little more tea? Alice, I haven't had any yet, so I can't very well take more. Mickey Mouse, Musketeer, or Musketeer, Ursula's Shell Necklace, and our foil, we have a foil version of Cerberus. God, didn't I say I would like a foil version of that? Well, I've got a foil version of that now. Huzzah me, or my wife, technically. These are, as I said, hers, but I mean, I'm gonna have to learn to play too, because who else is she going to play with? All right, we have two packs left. They are our Mickey ones. So that's, that is cool. I, I like that the deck comes with a booster, because that means your, your starter decks aren't all exactly the same. I think that's a, it's a neat thing, and I don't think any of the games I've ever played have done that. And there we go, we finished the little mini poster. Yay! There's our little mini poster. Now, the cards. Goofy Daredevil, Hey Hey Boat Snack, Freeze, Vicious Betrayal, Donald Luck Strutting and Stuff, Cerberus, I feel like we're getting a lot of dupes now. Bell, Inventive Engineer, but of course, you know, you might want to use more than one of a card in a deck. Maximus, Starkey, Be Prepared, I don't think we've had one of those before. Ariel, Spectacular Singer, and, the foil, and a foil version of the Magic Broom. Nice. Love me some Magic Brooms. So I feel like there's, I mean, I, I suppose somewhere there's probably a checklist. Maybe that's what the companion app would uh, do for me. Uh, show me what all the cards available are. 
so I can know, you know, what we're, what we have and what we need. I know I haven't seen that one that was like 80 bucks at Sack Anime. It was like jeweled something. All right, let's open up our last pack and we can finish off this video, which is probably about record length for a weekend magic video. And yeah, I feel like it's safe to assume that we will be doing more Lorcana booster pack videos in the future. So if uh, you like that sort of stuff, maybe maybe now's when you want to finally subscribe to this channel. Oh, new card. Duke of Wesselton, opportunistic official. Maleficent, sinister vo visitor. Not too fair, I mean, some of these cards may be in the other decks. We didn't look through all the decks. We're just looking mostly through the boosters here. Aladdin, Street Rat, Minnie Mouse, Beloved Princess, Friends on the Other Side, Prince Eric, Dashing and Brave, Chief Tui, Respected Leader, Prince Philip, Dragon Slayer, so... Uh, looks like Prince is a classification as well. Smash. Aurora, Dreaming Guardian. I'm guessing that is a non-foil version of the one that is in the Aurora deck. Marshmallow, Persistent Guardian, and a foil, Cinderella, Gentle and Kind. So yeah, I feel like, I, I wonder if there's, I wonder if there's like 64, that's what it said, right? It said there's 64 that fit in the, the lore book. Yeah, 64 standard cards go in the lore book. So I wonder if there are 64 foil cards, or maybe you're supposed to like pick out your 64 favorites. All right, so I'm putting those back as much as uh, possible so my wife can have the fun of going through them herself. So there we have it. Our first, but almost certainly not last, go through of Lorcana packs. I, uh, they are, I, I guess I've seen people saying online that they, uh, they are showing up like in Target stores and stuff, the booster packs anyways. So it's just a matter of keeping a lookout for them. I definitely would encourage you to not buy them from resellers selling them for obnoxious prices. That just encourages them to keep doing it and then they will never stop. But ultimately, you're going to do you. But I, I don't see any point in it. If you're collecting, I, mean, I think if you're collecting for value, you're probably kind of missing the point. But again, just my opinion. But I definitely won't be buying from any resellers selling from Noxious Points. Also, keep in mind, I know it happens with Magic. Uh, if you buy these from people who are less than reputable, they may have already opened them and taken out the foil card and then resealed them. I know that happens with Magic, and I'm sure it's going to happen with Arcana as well. Yeah, this is a whole new thing for us now to get into and collect and perhaps even play a bit. So I hope you found this all interesting or entertaining. Uh, if you came here hoping to learn how to play, sorry that's not what this video was. It was just kind of a first look at the cards and opening up the booster packs. I don't know. I'm not, you know, I'm not really a, a how to play channel, so I don't know that I'll come back and do a video on that. I'd have to figure out how to set the camera up at a table where we could both play it and... I'm frankly quite lazy, so I don't know that I would do that. If I do, it'll pop up here, but I definitely will be doing more boosters. So if you, if you like watching people open booster packs and not spending money on it yourself, you can come back here and we'll do that eventually. But I do thank you for watching today. Uh, please remember to like and subscribe, or please like, you know, YouTube likes it when you like it, and I like it when you like it, and then we'd all like, like it. And uh, leave some comments if, uh, which cards did you see were your favorite? If you have more insight on this than I have, if I've said something that's like horribly, horribly wrong uh, or just totally misguided, by all means, correct me in the comments. That nicely would be nice, but, uh, you know, I'm not super picky. But I do thank you again for watching, and I will see you in the next video.